Meanwhile, my friend is just standing there kind of in shock, but dick hard. I could tell he was hella tipsy and in the moment because all he could do was smile. Oh my, smile, bro. He kept it so casual to try and not make it awkward, but it was too late. Girl, I'm, oof. <laughs> Let me sit <see> up. <laughs> Tom Bravo and welcome back to the palace where peace and love always change everything okay on tonight's little edition of this show we have a uh, confessions part one going on for y'all uh, I had mentioned that before in my insta story I was trying to get people on board and I got a few responses so that's what we're gonna be going for tonight um what's that let the people know who you is they know who you are <laughs> already right, well of course, y'all know who I am. The best big sister ever. Period. I'm glad you know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That was cute. Um, yeah, but it's, it's the truth. Um, um, y'all can follow me underscore T-O-N-I-J um, on Instagram. I do follow back um, underscore Tony J. Oh, and I'm on Twitter. Uh at S T A R underscore M A C C. Right. So follow her on Twitter if you want to, you know, get to know her a little bit more. Oh, so are you, are you excited about the confessions? Because remember, I told you about the idea and I was kind of like unsure on um, how I wanted to be. But shit, I'm just diving right in right now. But what, what, what you think? What you think? Yeah, I'm excited. I think what's more exciting about, you know, you doing these little confession things is that you know your audience is diverse so okay. you don't know what type of story you're really getting until you read it and piece it together okay because you know you have straight homegirls and straight homeboys and you got the lgbt plus community right, so, right, right, right. and it'd be a lot of shit going on <laughs> in that community same as over in the straight community so you know this is gonna be some interesting shit, and I wonder what I got myself into tonight. Okay, we are gonna see. Okay, well, we're, we're I'm just gonna first off let it be known that uh, everything is gonna stay anonymous. Yes, y'all sent me the confessionals, but I am not gonna mention any names. Okay, that would not be fair. Okay, that would only you know basically ruin my reputation and discredit me as doing this. You know. Because I'm trying to put myself out there, but I'm definitely not going to build no distrust with my royalties, period. So, no names. That's number one. Um, number two, no judging. We're not going to judge whoever is doing the confessional. We're going to question shit, and we're going to wonder what the fuck is going on, but uh, we're not going to judge you, baby, because you live in your life, and we live in ours. So. And nine times out of ten, the people that are listening to these confessions or, you know, whoever you have featured doing this stuff, they didn't been through some shit too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, people can relate to half the shit that half of the people yeah. say. Because we all, you know, walk in the same life, period. We didn't all had a dog that did drag us from here to there, so. Oof, 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 whoa. I've been the dog that did drag. She a dog. And I've been Where dragged. that dog emoji at? Uh, I'm not a dog. Okay, let's just get into the confession. This one is crazy because I never saw myself in a situation like this. Had me feeling like I was on a BET series that didn't get aired. I don't know if I should be mad at myself, mad at the situation, or just mad at all. So it was a Friday night, me relaxing, kind of wasn't feeling good 100%, so I wasn't really trying to rest. Over the past few days prior, I had been checking up on a friend to see how he's doing since we almost talk every day, but I wasn't getting a response and it had me a little worried. All possible things that could have happened were going through my mind because it kind of wasn't like him to be MIA. I hit him on IG, text, and called him, but nothing. No delivery message come up on the iPhone as well as his phone going straight to voicemail. Let me say, he not my dude, but I could tell I care for him because I was worried and I just wanted to be put at ease. So, man, he finally writes me and instantly I'm excited, making sure he is good. Asked him, did he mean anything? He said no. Then he went into telling me what happened. I was shocked. He was mentioning stuff about him being in jail due to all the protesting going on. 
A cop had confused him with a looter and arrested him and took his ass to county jail. He went into describing the experience and I was so in shock. I kind of just wanted to see him and hug him to make sure he was all right. Right, this is how I could tell I liked him. So my ass tells him I was going to come over and see him, but tell him I wasn't feeling too good. I think it was some bad seafood I had at some new spot and my good Judy tried out. Try, uh, me and my good Judy tried out. My bad. Oh, yeah, because he used the word Judy. Yeah, okay. okay, okay. The homegirl. That's my bitch, my best. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that makes sense. I'll never go back there again. And mind you, what I like about this particular guy, friend, was that he knew how to take care of me when I wasn't feeling 100% myself. So I knew going over there, I would be in, a, I would be in good hands. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, I mean, it's not starting out bad. He wrote a lot. So, I mean, he was really <laughs> confessing. This is what I like, though. <laughs> this is what I want. One thing that's cool because it's detailed. It's kind of like, all right. We'll yeah, see. like I could get into this. Yeah, that's cool. That's real cool. So I, I get, know that it's a gay guy. Not to cut you off. It's a gay I get, uh, yeah, we can tell that because he said Judy. Judy. And then he, he's talking about a particular guy friend that always takes care of him. So, so I get over there kind of excited because I missed him a little bit. Okay, maybe a lot. I ain't gonna front with y'all. Shit, let's be honest. We all feel some type of way for somebody when we not in relationships, but fucking and just trying to be cool and hang, then feelings develop a little bit. I'm bad at that. Telling niggas I don't want nothing, but then as soon as sex get involved, that damn door that guards the gate to your heart opens up and you get all soft. I gotta stop doing that to myself. Are you like that? Like, are you like that? That kind of sound like me. I don't want to admit that, but that kind of sound like me. Because I do kind of tell dudes I don't want anything. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm really feeling a dude, it's kind of like, I feel you. I don't want to be in a relationship, but I feel you. So, But then I start to gather up certain feelings. And but I don't you, know, it's weird. But you know what? I'm going to say this. When people do stuff like that, mm-hmm. they be like, oh, I'm starting to like the person. They have to understand in their mind. They don't like the person because they haven't gotten to know the person. Mm-hmm. They like the sex. Okay. You got to learn how to separate what you really like because you don't technically like that person. You like okay. the sex. Okay. You just like the way the strokes is hitting. Oh, I do be liking the way the strokes hit. Mm, you make my back hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back into the letter. Anyway, so I get inside and immediately we hug. Such a warm embrace. He makes me melt sometimes, and this was definitely one of them. And I'm going to charge it to because I haven't talked to him in a few days. I ain't going to lie. He hit my pussy right, too, so I guess you see why I'm back over there. Hey, what? This night, I didn't want sex, though, because my stomach was fucked up. That booty was going to be real disrespectful, and I didn't want that. That nigga gay. Ooh. It's a gay guy. We chatted for pussy a bit. Uh-uh. <laughs> he said that booty. Oh, you said that pussy. The pussy. Uh-uh. Shut up, bro. We chatted for a bit, then I went and took a shower. After I come out, he's laying on the bed, so I go over there and press my naked body on top of his and ask him to just hold me. We really sat there and cuddled for a good hour, just talking about his experience with jail and how he was wrongfully detained and charged with some bullshit. So I finally get up and put some clothes on and lay back down. He mentioned something when I come, when I came in about an Oxycontin, and bitch, I took it. I was in so much pain. I just wanted to relax. After I laid down, he mentioned that his ex was coming over, and he wanted me to come downstairs so we could meet. Said he's a really nice guy, and I want you to meet him. My, See, he gay. He because his ex. Yeah, he oh, said, he's a really nice, nice guy. guy. Okay, so we got a hint that it's a guy. That's clear. Yeah, well, we know. <laughs> and I want you to be him. My body really wasn't feeling it, but I told him, yeah, anyway, but never went downstairs. That Oxycontin had me high as fuck after a while. He ended up bringing me a drink like 30 minutes after his ex came. A drink? That sounds and like an Oxycontin? So Michael Jackson. <laughs> Ooh, what? Okay. He ended up bringing me a drink like 30 minutes after his ex came and mentioned again about me coming downstairs. It was so cute because he kissed me while I was laying there with my eyes closed. Told him I just wasn't feeling it. After that, I kind of just dozed off because between the drink and narcotic, I was real comfortable. I heard them talking from upstairs. They were catching up from what it sounded like. They didn't need me down there because I probably would have been quiet because I wasn't feeling it. So I dozed off for a bit at this point because shit, I was feeling good and it was easy to fall asleep. Okay, I want baby girl to get up to the story because 
One thing that I'm kind of tripping off of is the Oxycontin in the drink. You, she up there feeling good. Feeling good, shit. And when I say she, I mean he. You know how the girls do. We call she, he, him, her, ha, who, you know. That man was trying to take advantage of that other man. <laughs> oh, giving him that Oxycontin yeah. shit. Oh, we gonna see, girl, because uh, uh, I'm ready to get into the juicy part. Okay, I ended up getting up. So she, so he dozed off for a bit at this point because he was feeling good and it was easy to fall asleep. I ended up getting up because I wanted water. That drink had me out of it, so I didn't, any, I didn't want any more of that. So I gathered myself to get up and go downstairs, and for some reason it was quieter than when I went to sleep, but I didn't think much of it. I assumed the ex went home and my friend was downstairs by himself relaxing. I'm coming downstairs and I guess the noise from the stairs had alerted them because some weird shit happened. I'm walking downstairs and I get to the first flight and I see my friend kind of rushing into the kitchen looking a little uneasy and up to no good, honestly. He asks, how am I feeling? I told him fine and then he introduces X. I'm casual but personable to him, still feeling a little high from the oxy but a little on alert because it looked like some funny shit going on. I told him, <laughs> right? <laughs> what? I'm just, it's it's kind of getting weird, y'all. Like, this nigga tried to roofie him. Uh uh. I told him, nice <laughs> to be, meet you, and went back upstairs. I downed the fuck out that water and laid the fuck back down, ready to get back to relaxing, but couldn't really get back comfy. I remember dozing off, but I don't remember for how long. It was kind of hot under all those covers, so I ended up getting back up to get more water. At this point, I really don't hear nothing. All the lights is off, so I'm wondering why isn't my, my friend up here if he's asleep. So I went downstairs, and I guess I was moving too fast for them to be able to react because they were both in the kitchen at this point. My friend naked, and his ex just had a tank top on. His ex kind of ran to try and hide and ended up folding himself over a bar chair, he girl. Was in that bussy bus. Behind the counter like he didn't want to be seen. Meanwhile, my friend is just standing there kind of in shock, but dick hard. I could tell he was hella tipsy and in the moment because all he could do was smile. Oh my, smile, bro. He kept it so casual to try and not make it awkward, but it was too late. Girl, I'm, oof. <laughs> Let me sit down. I'll, I'll get it into this. Tom, that. <laughs> Let me finish, girl. <laughs> he kept it so casual. To <laughs> casual? Yes, to try and not make it awkward, but it was too late. I asked, what y'all doing? He smiled and his ex just kind of in the chair like, oh my God. I tell him, well, you came for the dick, so get the dick then. That's what you wanted as I headed back upstairs. Ooh. That's like, uh-uh. So it's and I ain't like, even done. But you headed back upstairs and you caught them having sex? But but they couldn't they couldn't be mad because they not, they not with them. Girl. They can't be mad. Oh wait, hold on. Let me. Can't be mad. Girl, you caught them having sex, and you went back upstairs. I'm sure it's a it's a reason why they went back upstairs. I don't know, like like men, gay men. I don't know, like gay know. men. Which hold up, what you trying to say, y'all? <laughs> gay men what? We bought it for what? Gay men what, for girl? Two. Gay men, they, you guys don't react with much emotion anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, y'all give a fuck and y'all don't give a mm. fuck. So it's like, let it have been a female, you know. I, was, I think she would have been tearing up some shit. Exactly. She would have been tearing up some so shit. So for, for a black male, you know, it's kind of like, y'all really don't too much give a fuck about anything unless your feelings are really like into it yeah but i'm sure okay, it's, what a, you're saying. it's a valid explanation on mm. why that nigga didn't leave girl you went back okay let me let me keep reading maybe no was, judgment he, zone maybe he would caught an uber over there you better there. uber out the fucking door bro you got it over there you need to go home but I mean i can't i'm not judging let me keep reading bro thank you for sharing um i was so i was so feeling some type of way I honestly didn't know how to feel. Whether I should feel disrespected, not considered, mad as fuck, should I leave? I was laying there even telling myself, like, bitch, that's not your man, so you shouldn't even be mad. You had a point. You had a point. He was thinking that. Really rationalizing that his behavior was okay. 
I felt so small laying in his bed. To make matters worse, they go back to fucking, and I could slightly hear the moans from his ex and the extra noises from the set. Hey, I mean, shit, we, <laughs> we already got We up, already doing so, it. So, I mean, let's Why not keep done doing it? And I was intrigued but in shock and disappointed in him and myself at the same time. I'm kind of like, girl, y'all know I'm an empath, so I be already feeling, so I'm feeling, you know, the way he, he was feeling through this letter. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. That nigga, that nigga should have left. Okay, I was intrigued but in shock and disappointed in him and myself at the same time. Couldn't leave because my car was blocked in by the exit. Oh, it was <laughs> girl <laughs> and the page tires honey it was a mess and i was all over the place i asked myself why did i stay do you like him that much so after a while the sounds and noises escalate from the passion in the moment and then here comes a loud groan slash snorting noise that my friend makes when he reaches that high point and my <laughs> and high point mean when he nut right that's what i'm thinking if he groaning and snorting how you snort <laughs> Wait, do it again. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, <laughs> so you you wouldn't like if a girl snort <laughs> when she? <laughs> yeah, we, to be honest, we wouldn't have sex again. <laughs> girl, that might turn you on. I don't want to hear about female like, snorting and shit like that. Snort. Oh my god, okay. And mind you, he never came back upstairs that night. The ex spent the night and they both were sleeping. His two recliner chairs looking exhausted and worn out. Yeah, I went downstairs to see. I didn't care why I did that to myself either. This really sent me into a place of confusion and questioning. I really couldn't answer any of the questions, but after that experience, I haven't looked at him the same. I didn't want him to touch me or anything. I ended up falling back asleep because my car was blocked in. I know, excuses, excuses. I would be like, uh, yeah, you ex, <laughs> let me you gotta out. go. Okay, period. Even before then, shit. Once you went downstairs that first time, it was kind of like that was your that was your stage to exit. I would have like initially knew what the fuck was going on. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm nosy. Period. If, I, if I'm looking for something, I'm gonna look. And if I even feel like some shit is off, I would have went upstairs, <laughs> put on my little Nike slides, and got the fuck up on. Like, like Nike go. said, just do it, bitch. Period. <laughs> <laughs> and then awoke the next morning, still in the confused funk. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you, so you slept over there, bro. We just okay. I hear the ex leave the next morning, and then here comes my friend coming up the stairs. So I act sleep. This fool had the nerve to get up under the covers and try to cuddle with me. Ew. I felt like he was so disgusting, and he really didn't deserve to get the privilege anymore. No, sissy. Hell no. What the fuck? Like, bro. I don't want no nigga coming to live on me after I hear him having sex with somebody. Like, go wash your dick. You ain't even fucking washed your mouth, nigga. Did have you? I don't know what y'all think, but... <laughs> <laughs> Lesbians be doing some shit, too, bro. So, let me finish, because this is it. I go back and forth with myself, wondering, am I doing too much? Not communicating with him like I used to? Because at the end of the day, we not together. He's a good friend, but his consideration for me in that moment seemed invisible, and I don't feel like that's acceptable. I've been really short with him and haven't been back over there since. I've been so cold to him, and he just wants me to go back to normal, but I told him he probably will never get that person again. Don't fucking ask for normal. So don't count on it. Sincerely confused damsel stressing the fuck out. Girl, I feel like I need a seatbelt on for that motherfucking story, like for real. I'm stuck at the <laughs> fact that that motherfucker stayed. Shout out to, to who said that first fucking confessional bitch. You went in, girl. Like, for real. That shit was deep. Yes, like, you stay, sis. It ain't no judgments here. You know, we all gonna speak our own little piece because I already know people to gonna comment own, but and, I and below. Stay. And I'm so glad that you felt comfortable to send this to me. Um, that was some good tea, though. It was some good tea, bro. I wouldn't have stayed either. I think I would have been a little bit uncomfortable. Um, yeah, because I get emotionally involved and attached low-key. And 
I can't just allow that to go down and I'm not consensual about being there while that's taking place. So it would already be awkward for me. So I'm just kind of like, mm, sis, no. Um, but shout out to you because that's a learning lesson for you, sis. Because I know it left you feeling a lot of type of ways like you stated in the letter, but... Mm. He probably was like... You know how Issa be in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> right. Bitch, why you do that? You know you should. Period. Do her little rap. Bitch, you gotta go home. He a fucking hoe. You gotta go home. What you know, though? He a fucking hoe. But you gotta go home, though. He fucking his ex on the bathroom floor. But you still here at the house, though. Laying down, hoe. Get your ass up and go out the door. <laughs> <laughs> But no, okay, that was not the case because your ass stay, girl. Oh my god. You know what? Like we say, no judgment. No. Um, honestly, I walked in on the ex for real. Yeah, I walked in on the ex before. I think my heart would drop, sis. Hot. Ooh. It was a tricky situation, um, but I just know that I had dipped. I ain't spend the night. I ain't stay. I just did, <laughs> and um, girl, you got the fuck up out of there, huh? I got the fuck ASAP. <laughs> ASAP, shit. Like that Period. wasn't that wasn't a good feeling, um, and for me to be in a relationship. But I know that if I were single, hell, shit. Like, look, <laughs> call me when you wash right. up. Give <laughs> me a couple of days. We can go out to eat tomorrow. Yeah. We can go out to that. eat tomorrow, all that. But that. in that in that situation, nah, that's that wasn't cool at Especially all. Especially if you went over there for one says not feeling good, you know, you already kinda in a vulnerable state mm -hmm. as far as your body and your mind is concerned. So I feel like you really shouldn't have put yourself in that situation. As soon as your antennas went up for some red flag type shit, you should have ghosted. Like and sometimes you gotta watch out for stuff like that. Cause when people show you who they are, um, you really gotta kind of believe them because they're letting you know like we are human we all have flaws. he got drugged he got drugged yeah do you think that was the guy's intention i mean we don't know that from the story i don't, I don't I think mean, that was the guy's okay, intention i'm not gonna say that this is know. how this is how i see it like i think the guy probably made it clear like look we ain't finna be fucking because i didn't have some bad to eat so he probably didn't take care of his butt right so in the guy head like all right well shit let me line some other dick up but in the meantime boo a ain't giving me no ass and they feel they they kind of sick or something so i'm gonna give them this drug mm. but, but he wanted the boo he wanted him to come downstairs and meet him and stuff like that yeah he said, come downstairs and meet him. I want okay, to so, so that's just like... So it's kind of, it would have disalarmed me. Like, oh, he wants us to meet, you know, okay. It don't seem like no funny shit going nah, on. Nah, because nowadays, you could take you could take your bitch to meet an ex-bitch. Oh, let me go to the bathroom real quick. And you and the ex-bitch mm. in the bathroom doing shit you ain't got no business. Niggas do be doing that. I don't know. I, 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 I synced it. I think I don't know, bro. It, it, <laughs> I don't know. So, like, I, I personally, at nowadays, in 2020, in this pandemic and all this shit going on, I do not put nothing past nan bitch. Nobody. Nan nigga. Nobody. You can't put nothing past your own mama nowadays. So, it's kind of like, you know, his intent probably wasn't to harm anybody okay but at the same time on the other half of that stick is probably like you know and let me get this nigga this drug here sip a little bit of this wine because i'm finna get my dick sucked and mm. my dick wet that's deep you gotta play both sides like, you do you i'm gotta the type play that, advocate. that that i will give you the benefit of the doubt until you show me other motherfucking wise right. okay but that in this situation here they they there's no relationship no so it kind of it, it's you know it's different but it was still inconsiderate i feel like that's why i said i don't feel like i could have stayed but because it was inconsiderate of it was it was just sis the whole in the story being vulnerable in that state of mind where she wasn't that? feeling good you know let me finish it was sis being vulnerable 
she was going over there to check in with him. She hadn't heard from him for a few days. So when she got the chance to check in with him and go over there and chill with him, okay, she made it happen, and she thought it was just going to be that. She didn't know the ex was about to come over until the ex had just kind of came, and he had said, boom, bam, bada, thank you, ma'am. Like, I don't think it's her fault she went over there and was feeling vulnerable. I think it was her fault she stayed. Okay, there you go. But not her fault that she went over there trying to chill with him and hang out, not knowing what was going to take place later on. I feel like us us being human, we all got our little dumb moments. Yeah. And honestly, it, this is a no judgment zone. But I'm sure you know that, you know, whoever you are, you did have a dumb episode in your period of life. And you can move forward from this. Yeah, you can. Don't allow yourself to, if you are put in this situation again, leave yeah Just run yeah. grab your the, heels yeah go. period like she said and at the end of the day basically like protect your peace and your sanity girl because it sounded like he was going through it while you was up there laying in the bed and yeah, you yeah. hearing them moaning and him snorting and shit like, like if you was gonna stay and listen you could at least want to join or watched it right front row you know like Shit. That was a good confession. I like that. That was good. I like how it was, you know, detailed and shit like that. That was really good. Y'all keep that shit coming. Yeah, she liked it. I like that. So, I hope you have me again to do another confession. Hey, okay. I hope somebody else sends me a few confessionals so that, you know, I can kind of keep this going. It definitely was very entertaining to me, you know, <laughs> reading through the story. I'm kind of like, I had to say that, bitch. Like, damn. Let me, like I said, I needed a seatbelt for this motherfucking ride because it was a little, it was a little trying. I was kind of emotionally taken through with this bitch, bro. Like, girl, I think this is something else. But shout out to you for sending me the confession. I appreciate you, boo. Um, that's gonna wrap it up for confessions part one. Stick around for part two. You never know who I'm gonna have next to me, period. And you never know what we're gonna hear because this one, that was a lot. That was a lot, okay? But all right, kings and queens, I love you, and have a good motherfucking night. Peace. <laughs> I had to make sure it was recorded, because that shit had pissed me off again.